All right then, what's going on everyone and welcome to another edition of the As Lads podcast and today we've got a good friend of ours, Ben, oh Ben, oh, he's here, <laughs> he knows a lot about shit so he's a good person to talk to. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully. But yeah, so first things first, YouTube news, I've got a couple of stories first, so the first one's quite depressing. Um, me and George were talking about it on the last one. Etika has um, died, sadly. He was found dead in a river. Yeah. Just a real shame, really, because he was only 29. He had a lot of stuff going for him, like with his channel and everything, a decent amount of fans. And Then this happens, it just shows that, you know, mental health can affect anyone. And he seriously did have it, you know, because if he's doing something like that, then he had serious issues and should have got help, you know. But um, don't put this in the title of the video, Aaron, or anything. I don't no, want... Because this is such a sad thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, it, may, it gets me really angry that people were putting it in the title of the video and making total full videos just about Etika, like, dying, just for views. It's so disgusting. Honestly. If they wanted to do... If they genuinely cared about him, they'd just say... I don't know, they could put really sad story... And then they say it. I know. I know that's a bit generic and daft, and it's not spreading the <coughs> thing about him. But it's just because so many yeah. people do it. It's just like, it's just irritating. I know we're talking about him, but again, I don't want it in the title of the video. It just showed, you know, it's just annoying. Have you seen that yeah. video where that guy did a did a Ouija board video talking to Etika? Went like an hour what after he passed the f- it's awesome. Yeah, He's, he does videos for eight year olds, and he. Uh... What on? Uh... It's yeah. Every, everyone... I'm speechless. What a pretty piece bad. of shit. Oh no, that's pretty Who the fuck does he think he is? Is he actually like making a living off YouTube, this idiot? Yeah, he, he has 4 million subscribers, I think, or 2 million. Not too sure. Why the fuck is he wasting his time doing... <clears throat> his audience is 10-year-olds. Pretty much, no, yeah. but like, if, you've all, if you're already set for life, you've got 4 million subs, why make a load of nonsense, a nonsense video about some... It, it's like a, he's making a mockery of... This, I mean, you know, right. it's just a massive mockery. I mean, he, he just does it for views. He's one of those channels. I'm not... Such a piece of shit, trying to profit off someone's death. I'm sorry, I know we try and be unbiased on the podcast, but this is a fucking disgrace. Yeah, I'm not get, like, I agree. Saying, I agree. But, um, yeah, it's just... I think people uh, people see this and they, they jump on the chance to capitalise on it, don't they? It's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Everything can be monetized online, unfortunately. <laughs> really depressing what's annoying is youtube youtube will take down like like i say videos with the copyright in it or certain ytps which aren't even monetized or any of that shit but they won't be asked to take down absolutely disgusting shit like this it's despicable but you know it's it's whatever at the end of the day that they don't take it down but i just wish people would stop doing this shit well, but you know they want to get their ad revenue but they don't want to you know spoil yeah. that <laughs> yeah anyway next story then um, this is a really, really bizarre one. So, Deji and KSI back at it again. And, um, <laughs> a lot of people are switching sides after Deji's latest video. I'm still on JJ's side. I don't particularly care about either guy, really. Um, like, JJ makes some decent videos, but I'm not too fussed, you know. He's not, like, one of my favourite YouTubers ever. Um, yeah, Deji just... The thing is, he was crying about a situation that JJ fucked the same girl that he did. But then four years earlier, when it originally happened, Deji was going, me and JJ fucked the same girl. <laughs> she likes me better. <laughs> and if and if the people who are sucking up to Deji can't see that this is partly, it's it's got to be partly because he's losing the arguments and he's putting the tears on. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound unsympathetic, but if he... If he didn't originally laugh at the situation, then I'd be like, you know what, Deji must be really gutted, he's got too much hate, blah, 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 blah. And he ha- probably has had a lot of hate. But, you know, laughing about the situation originally, then four years... So it took him four years later to realise that it's messed up that him and his brother fucked the same girl. Like, bloody hell, unless he was putting the unless he was putting the laugh on. But I don't see why he do that. Surely he'd still be angry about it, because if Deji gets emotional over, like, a little thing like Randolph saying he's a dead YouTuber and JJ saying, why did you put the bank details in the video? Then surely he's going to be ridiculously emotional on camera about JJ fucking the same girl he's fucked. And he was making jokes about it saying, oh, she likes me better. So, yeah. If he truly felt this way. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I have no idea what 
the whole drama sort of thing. I, I haven't followed it, so that's why I'm sort of... Didn't you watch the video I sent you when well, Deji was crying? Um, I've seen sort of highlights, but... I'm trying to be the bad guy! <laughs> Sorry. But um, I don't follow it as closely <sighs> as other people do. I just... It just seems a bit pointless to me. It just seems like brothers fighting for no apparent reason. Well, I saw it on a news channel, the best channel, apart from Callum's Corner, the True Geordie. Um, yeah. So, you know. Oh, yeah, this isn't paid promotion. I just think they're amazing. So, yeah. Um, to be honest, Deji just... I, I don't know. I'm sure he's got issues. I'm sure he's got mental health problems. I'm not saying he's faking that or anything. I'm just if he's crying on camera, he's and he's got a lot of height, and you know he's struggling to deal with YouTube at the moment. He's clearly got some sort of mental health issues. It's got to be horrible for people to be hating on him. But the, his his reasoning should just be: Can you all just stop having a go at me? I'm absolutely angry. Please, uh, you know, getting upset that way. But instead, he's getting upset about a situation that happened four years ago, and then he was laughing about it originally. If it wasn't for him laughing about it originally and being fine with the situation originally, then I'd have a lot more time for him because it's got to be horrible people hating on him. But, you know, it's just yeah. ridiculous. Ben, your thoughts, man? Uh, I don't really have much of an opinion, I guess. Uh, you know, pe people often exaggerate these things just to get the clickbait revenue, don't they? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's quite a shame that no one really cares about Deji's channel unless he's fighting with KSI because he's got 10 million subs and a lot of his videos only get, like, 300, 400k views, which is kind of sad, really. You know, so I'm not saying he's doing it for clicks. I'm just saying, you know, but yeah, he needs to take a break from YouTube now. Just take a load of time off, you know, block a load of, make a new social media so people can't message him and say hateful things. But I mean, look at all the stuff Callum's Corner went through, Aaron, with all the Tic Tac bullshit. I know we laugh about it now a bit, but he got insulted. He got so much shit. And I know part of, partly it was brought on himself by the way he reacted, but, you know, so many people had to go at him. So many people bullied him. And like he did cry in one video, but that's because Gareth was being Gareth was being a dosser to him. You do you remember Aaron when um, he said my head my head does look like a son in Tic Tac that video? Oh yeah. And he was crying. When when Michelle didn't turn up. <clears throat> yeah yeah. She didn't turn up and, the KFC. <laughs> well. well McDonald's wasn't it yeah. Yeah yeah. And he said I felt like how can I go around with Humpty Dumpty on my head. <laughs> <laughs> It's really, it's really ironic that his most viewed video is my head does not look like a tic tac, and, and then and the second one is I do look like a tic tac. He's so random. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think if Callum's Corner watches this one now that we've laughed at him crying, we've got no chance of getting him on the podcast now. But you know, uh, obviously it's just a bit of witty banter, Callum. We think you're a legend, mate, but you, you're definitely not going to watch this all come on the podcast. So it's whatever. But yeah, um, that's the end of that then, Aaron. Um, I've only got two little things. They're not really the, the biggest, though. So, um, yeah. obviously, you know about the website Twitch, don't you? Oh, yeah. That was a bad time to say. Um, but basically, they've gone full, like, cam site now. It's really weird. So, do you know what a cam site is? Isn't that when you, um, you know, sexual stuff on cameras? Yeah, but you pay for it and you pay for it. Oh, yeah. Basically, Twitch has now brought in this service where you can, basically, to view certain people on Twitch, you have to pay before you even see what they're doing. What, and then do they, um, no, it's not you know, that, expose well, themselves? Twitch has a lot has a lot of um, cam girls on there, even though they don't like to admit it, but they have people who, like, wear, like, just their underwear and then bend over and say, like, oops, thank you for subscribing, you know, that sort of <laughs> thing. <laughs> Whoop! Bent over! Thank you for the subscribe! My boobies! That's pretty much what it's like, but now they're just going full on, like, cam site at the moment, so. Bit of a waste of time in it, but, you know, if they want to get a new audience, then fair enough. I don't know. I don't know. They, well, they did, they did say that they like all their community, but, that, but then people said, well, you only like the community that has $5 or more. Ha! Huh. So, yeah, it's just pretty random. Probably true. And, um,. Yeah, the last sort of thing is there's loads of copyright strikes going around at the moment by people pretending to be companies. So there's this one company pretending to be Bungie. That That's very weird. Mass copyright in video for some reason. Bizarre, man. I know. I, yeah. I don't really know what else to add to that, but that's my end of it. End of the news bit for me. Fair enough. So first thing we're going to talk about then, 
is the film industry and shit. So, what do you guys think was good and bad about the film industry years ago? Like, you guys go first, and I'll say mine. Uh, do you want to go first, Ben? Sure. Ladies well, first, age before beauty. I think I don't think most people. I think most people are feeling this at the moment. But what I don't like what's happened to the industry now is that it, we're just living in an age of unoriginality and. I mean, years ago, know. but all right, we can do the second one first. Things oh, no, that are good and good and bad about yeah, it now. Yeah, I was just saying. Like, I, th- I think back in its heyday, back in like, I guess you probably just um, I, the jump to Technicolor, which I think was like early 50s, I don't know when it was, but when it peaked, I think, you know, when you had all these different films coming out, like uh, Gone with the Wind and stuff like that, and Wizard of Oz, ooh, that was probably, <coughs> you know, I think I think we've kind of lost that, like, era of, like, uh, exploration and back when practical effects were so big. Yeah, I mean, the problem with the problem with that sort of film, The Wizard of Oz, is that it just looks stupid now. And look campy, and the the recreations of it are shit. So yeah, <laughs> they're absolute dog shit. I mean, didn't they do a Muppets one? And they did, a, didn't they do a live action one with Johnny Depp? Or is that some? That's Alice in Wonderland. I don't know. I can't yeah, remember. Michael Jackson. Or like, Michael Jackson. It, but it was all black people instead of white people, and that was the gist of it. it was like a African American version of it called The Wiz. Oh, was it any good or meh? I've heard mixed reviews. But, yeah. Okay. Aaron, do you want to go next? Then we'll do what's good and bad about the film industry now. Then, or do you want to say what's good, Ben? Is there anything? Uh, well, like I don't know. I guess I guess there's a bit more safety in it now. But with that safety of like uh, shared universe and all these different films, you, I think you lose a bit of that uh, risk that you know you had decades ago. Mhm. Fair enough, Aaron. Um, I was just thinking. Because now, it, I mean, with all of the modern movies that have come out in the past few weeks, like Toy Story um, and all that, I know that's a pretty random example. But I heard Toy Story was very solid, though. It seems like they were just living in a world of repeat, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Just like the, the same movie over and over again, it's like a slightly different background, slightly different setting, um, slightly different storyline. Um, it can work for some movies, like the Avengers series, that works, mm-hmm. because they're their own little individual movies. Yeah, yeah. A lot of movies, it's like he, it's, I forgot what series it was, but there was a series that came out within the first episode, like a day later after it like premiered, they were already making series two. It's like you haven't even seen what the, you haven't even seen what it's like, you just... I know what you're on about, Afterlife, and that was a really amazing show, and they probably knew it was amazing, though, Aaron, if I'm being honest, mate. It was, it is, I know you haven't watched it, but it is really good. Very yeah. solid show. It's just, Deserves it's, a... it's just that idea of, you know, we put it out straight away, oh, we better make another one, we better make another one, oh, we better make another one, it's like, without seeing what it's like. Well, I think Ricky just said that he was working, writing season two, which is fine, you can write season two if you want. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's just like the whole idea cool. of certain movies doing that, it's like Transformers. Oh yeah, yeah, dog shit films like that. Yeah, that's just my sort of look on it. Yeah, to be honest, if you think, do you want us what's good? Then I'll say mine. Um, I think. Well, I guess if you look at it from another sort point of view, like at least diversity is a bit better in certain movies now. It's like yeah, you don't just have like big, like ridiculous, ridiculously like strong men. I'm not like a arguing any sort of political gender or anything by the way but I'm just saying like at least it's good you see different characters being played by different people yeah yeah I agree if they just completely like rewrite someone's history to fit in with a political agenda that doesn't make any sense to me Mm -hmm. so like when they cast um, Hermione Granger as being black in that um, play uh, the Harry Potter play that doesn't make any sense was it a big play or just a low level play or J.K. Rowling ripped the Play. It was pretty big. Uh, it was sold out in every every screening it did. So, yeah. I guess if it was a big play, then they shouldn't have been faffing around. Yeah. Well, her her, her reasoning behind it was a little sketchy, in my opinion, because she tried to claim that uh, she'd always imagined Mighty as not having a race, but then in every movie or, or illustration, Hermione was white. So it's like it doesn't really add up. In, mm-hmm. in the first description, I think she gave of Mighty in the first book, she was a, a beautiful white-looking girl. I think that's, yeah. what, that's what she said. I yeah. thought she was meant to be like 
really politically oh, no. correct. That was back in like, the eighties or where. No, oh. what think... made a change? So obviously it's good that she, you know, doesn't describe Hermione as just about a race, but like, what made a change so much? Money, <laughs> pretty much. Oh. Wanting to wanting to fit in with the current trend of mm. diversity, I think. You know, like, which I think is fine, but she's not. She's not honest. She's uh, she's quite deceptive about it. Like when she claims that Dumbledore's gay. And then it, she doesn't really want to commit to that. And she just says, oh, you know, he's, he's gay, but we don't talk about it. You know? That's ha- very weird. PewDiePie as well. I know it's pretty random, but she hates PewDiePie. <laughs> yeah, she called PewDiePie a fascist, in her own words. And what the hell did PewDiePie even do? Nothing to her. It's, I think this was right after the whole uh, dressing up in a Nazi costume. And she'd clearly not looked into the situation very much, but she, in her own words, called him a fascist and a neo-Nazi sympathizer or something. Very, so, very bizarre. Very worrying. Um, like, he shouldn't really be making comments about YouTubers in her position, in my opinion. He shouldn't really be attacking people like that, you know. Yeah. Just do your research. Yeah. But making outlandish statements like that, that clearly aren't true. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'll just say what I think is good and bad about the film industry now. So, <coughs> good shit about the film industry. The effects are better. Uh, really big budgets behind films, so, you know, they can really go far with stuff. Uh, loads of different actors. They can afford different actors. So, in films, you can get, like, massive casts that you wouldn't even believe are possible. Um, but, yeah, so that's that's the main good shit about it. Bad stuff. They tend to focus on um, just... You know, I wish they just focus more on story rather than who they have in the film. Or if they are going to focus on who they have in the film, make it all story driven. Don't just try and appeal to people. Make it all about the story because then that'll get more well received, more better reviews, and it'll go down in history as a better film. Because I know obviously it partly is about making money, but you know, films like Fight Club, Shawshank Redemption, Shinners, this Goodfellas, um, you know, all them, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever. All of those films, they didn't make loads of money, but they've gone down in history as fucking amazing class films, you know. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake, I'm being wrong again. This happened on the last bloody podcast. All right, I'll be back in a sec just to talk about stuff. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay. no, I, I agree. I think I think that's what Tarantino will probably do with his uh, next film because it's got a really good cast, but it feels like he's gearing up to something really big with it. Oh, so. because uh, they were talking about making, or he was writing a um, Star Trek movie. Yeah. Is that still happening? I'm not too sure because people say that's going to be his like tenth and final movie, but um, that'd yeah. be a good way to go out. Hmm. Imagine what it would be like just like an R-rated Star Trek movie. Oh man, yeah, that'd be pretty good. Um, all right, James usually does this; just leaves us on the spot. So um, I'll I don't know where to take this conversation, so I'll just <laughs> say some things. Um. So, have you watched any good movies recently? Uh, yeah, it wasn't um, it wasn't a recent movie. Like it, it's, a, it's about ten years old, but I, I watched uh, This Is England for the first time the other day. Oh, and, I've heard uh, about that. Yeah. Yeah, because I like, and when I told people I watched it, they were like, "Oh, you've only just watched it," because it's a very um important film, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> we we're just talking about recent movies we've watched. Just very suddenly moved on. Yeah, so anyway, um, good and bad shit. I said the good shit, so bad shit, obviously, they need to focus more on story. Maybe, I know CGI is a brilliant thing, but if you look at The Hobbit, have you guys seen The Hobbit Battle of Five Armies? Yeah. Yeah. That's, the CGI in that was dog shit. Yeah. It was unbelievably bollocks. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, and I, most of The Hobbit was... I like The Hobbit in Des- Desolation of Smaug. I like the... DJ, I mean... I like the CGI and the Desolation of Smaug. That made more sense, if I'm brutally honest with you. Because they had the dragon, they CGI'd some of the sea, they CGI'd some of the wolves. I know the, um, what were they called? The wargs. The wargs didn't look that good, but everything else looked all right. You know, they had a battle with the spiders in the trees. That Which looked is cool. Which is because in the original, I think it was Return of the King, they literally invented a program to, like, CG, introdu- uh, like, put... CGI creatures in the battle and make it look all realistic and everything was simulated. And it yeah, was yeah. groundbreaking at the time, but now it's just kind of mm-hmm. like, like it's not as impressive now. Yeah, yeah, and in the Battle of Five Armies, there wasn't really any emotion apart from uh, Thorin's death as well, which sucked. 
Yeah. Uh, but just way too much CGI, and they were breaking the laws of physics with um, Lego last jumping on the stones in, <gasps> in midair. It was a, it was an okay film, but it looked a bit stupid. It was really stupid. I mean, I, I think it didn't but the original... Stupid. Sorry to interrupt you, but the original Lord <laughs> of the Rings, that was so fucking practical, man. And I prefer films when they're practical. If you think of Again, if you think of all the greatest films of all time, take Godfather, for example, there isn't any stupid, silly effects. I know there's a couple of explosions and some gunshots, but a lot of that, I know it's really slow paced, but most of that is solid, amazing story, man. Mm. And people need Reservoir Dogs, that's all story, you know. There isn't, there's not even an explosion in that. There's just a few gunshots, you know. And that's such an amazing story. Yeah. It's very, it's very uh, low scene, isn't it? Yeah. I just wish they'd focus on better writing, more story. I mean, as much as, like, recently, this year, I've really enjoyed, for just storyline-wise and uh, dialogue, The Mule, Dragged Across the Concrete, and um, The Favourite, just for dialogue and storyline-wise. Um, I know, Aaron, me and you went to see um, Rocket Man, but that film, it was the, all the dance choreography and all the weird editing, that was still a little bit, like, out there, and I didn't like all the breaking forth war shit in it, so... I do like the practicality of those other three films I mentioned more, because The Favourite just takes place in a castle. The Mule, obviously, it does take place in loads of different places, but it's really, really practical. And same with Dragged Across the Concrete, really practical as well. So I prefer those type of films, you know. Yeah. But yeah, what was good about and bad about the film industry years ago? I'll go first with this one, okay. So, years ago, what was, what was bad about it is that you did get some really, really... Like, I know you get some dog shit films now, but there was more chance of being really dog shit films about because shit, some shit was really, really corny, really stupid, and it would just be so boring. I mean, look at Jaws 4. That was absolute daftness, or Troll 2. They're just really, really weird, bizarre films. It also seemed like there was way too many sequels made, like in the Alien series, the Predator series, Terminator series, Jurassic Park. Um, yeah. You know... Uh, so loads of horror films. Um, what else? They made way too many Dirty Harry sequels as well. That was stupid. Star Trek sequels. Um, Godfather sequel. Well, that was a trilogy, and the only one that and the third one was still good, but the ending was a bit stupid. So yeah, yeah. Um, good shit about the old films. Like I said, practicality, stories. Um, a lot of it. Some certain bits, like obviously there were some corny bits, like the dialogue they used, but a lot of it felt really, really real. Now that can either be the quality of the actors, the quality of the directors, or just because the storylines are a lot more simple, so it was more applicable to real life, you know. But yeah, that's just my analysis of it. What do you guys think? Um, if I was going to say something, I'd probably say back then a bad thing would be there was certain actors who could get any job that they wanted so I know Sylvester Stallone a lot of the movies he was in like there was like oh yeah too many Rockies those were awful yeah. sorry yeah. sorry there was a robot yeah. in one of them like for fuck's sake who was a robot in a blood oh. but um, <laughs> basically massive actors back then they could pretty much get whatever they want and it was like you're sort of seeing the same sort of <clears> actors <throat> doing the same job and it got very boring very quickly and Hulk bloody Hogan was in it sorry <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's, it's like such just, shit they were just more like typecast but then it was like oh you can do this sort of role so every movie you wanted to see like an action movie had the same actors in mm -hmm. pretty much the same actors in fair enough yeah um and obviously good things about the old films if you've got anything to say about it um I guess that they pushed the bound because like if you if you look at like, the 70s and 80s like mm. 10 20 years before it was all like you know, the 50s style of movies where it was very like tongue-in-cheek sort of thing it was like oh you know we're very formal and all that and then in, they started pushing the boundaries to more like outlandish mm. sort of stuff and then i guess it, you know it sort of like made a lot of innovations to be taken off that, that makes any sense yeah um fair enough all right then, lads. Next thing, in your guys' opinion, what would you say the best decade of film is? Ooh. Um, See, I'm an I'm an eighties guy, really. I think John Hughes, you know, Spielberg, Lucas, that kind of thing. That, that, that Lucas, you, Howard the Duck, what? <laughs> it's, no, you've got to, no, no. The <laughs> thing is, no, it no. Is. But with George, I'm not having a go. But with George Lucas, he was dog shit. He owned no. He only did A New Hope. <laughs> 
Um, Empire Strikes Back was Empire Strikes Back was done by some random geezer who who did good movies, but that was the only big film he did. And then Return of the Jedi, I swear, was someone else. The only reason New Hope was so good was because yeah. George Lucas had so much guidance. Yeah, he's an amazing storyteller, though. He's amazing at writing not stories. Not specifically, I'll give him that. not specifically Luke. Just that decade of kind of storytelling. Oh basically. yeah, the eighties yeah. was decent. A bit corny in a bit of its day, like Back to the Future and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. They were fairly corny of, and of its day, but there was some. Um, they were still Back to the Future yeah. was still a solid film. Um, so, what are your favourite films from the eighties then? Obviously, a lot of the Indiana Jones films. You got some classic yeah. gangsters like Once Upon a Time in America. Like you said, Ferris Bueller, uh, The Breakfast Club, probably Return of the Jedi, that kind of thing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, fair enough, man. All right, then. For me, it has to be the 90s. Oh, yeah, I'm was, sorry, lads. I was going to say that, to be honest. By, by miles, you know. <laughs> there were so many. I mean, you got Terminator 2, Pulp Fiction, uh, Reservoir Dogs, Goodfellas, Casino, Heat, um, American History X, The Green Mile, Leon. Leon, classic, unusual suspect, Siren Private Ryan, Braveheart, Life is Beautiful, Silence of the Lambs, um, Seven, you know, all these amazing films. The Matrix was pretty decent. I know it's a bit dated now, but, you know, that doesn't matter. Forrest Gump, uh, Fight Club, I could go on. The list goes on, you know, Schindler's List, um, Shawshank Redemption, amazing, love it. It felt like it was the most modern, applicable to real life era. And it wasn't really corny. It felt really realistic. So, you know, you can't say the 90s films are of their day. They just feel like they still hold up to today. Yeah, fair enough. You know. Aaron, what, yours is the 90s as well, then? Um, yeah, I'd probably pretty much say the same as you. Uh, I'd also sort of say, I mean, <clears> obviously <throat> I like movies from pretty much every decade. Like, yeah, yeah. Everything has something solid. I think, like, the 90s, it has that sort of weird thing where it's it's old, but it's not too old like mm-hmm. you can still you know you can still find references to it today. yeah yeah 100% but, uh, but yeah that's yeah fair enough top 5 genres as well before we go on to the next thing actually Ben do you want to do your top 5 films of all time as well for a laugh or do you not have any in mind uh, yeah I've, 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 I've usually got a top 5 yeah alright then top 5 your top 5 films because me and Aaron did it a few podcasts ago and it uh, was a, well, there was a bit uh, of a miscommunication from me you know yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, my uh, top my I guess I'd start from five, but uh, yeah, number five would probably have to be uh, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, yep, solid, very good shit. Great movie, great. Every time I watch it, it's just as essential as the first time. I've tried to read the book, but uh, I haven't got very far. CBI. I think it. I think it works better as a movie, honestly. I think the author said that as well. So. Yeah, solid shit, man. Number four. Number four would probably be uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, okay. Well, it's, it's a, it's a no! great. Someone well, it's a lot. Clip that. Someone needs to clip that. <laughs> what? If we can clip, clip that out of the video, it's a soundboard. It's a soundboard. No. <laughs> no, I think it's. <laughs> no! Um, that's just a reference to Felly. Hey, bada 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 bada, hey, bada bada bada, some wing, bada bada hey, Kennedy, Kennedy. It's a great um, 80s movie. It's, it's iconic. No, 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 no. I wouldn't put it in number four. Sorry, no. <laughs> no chance. I mean, this is his personal top five. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, He's sorry. 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 Movies, you know. yeah, sorry, fair enough. Like, I've, I mean, yeah, I've seen a lot of great movies, but that's the one that I just I find myself mm-hmm. watching the most. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is a fairly solid film. Very of its day, but fairly solid. Would we'll not put it at number four, but fair enough. It's not. It's nothing bad yeah, or harmful is, or anything. This is, my, this is my favorite. When, when you talk about favorites, I'm not talking about what I think are objectively the best movies. I'm just talking about what speaks to me the most. Yeah, so, yeah fair enough, man. Yeah. Uh, like, at, and at number three, I've put. Return of the King, but I could literally just put the entire trilogy there, really, because they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So fucking amazing. I think they all hold up the same amount, really. A million percent, man. Quality films. Um, there's, they're just, like I say, so practical. So much effort went into them. Amazing acting, amazing characters. Little problems here and there. You know, Legolas was a bit bland. Gimli just turned into a joke after the first one. But he was still fairly, still one of my favourite characters. Um, really amazing trilogy, bro. Return yeah. of the King is the standout goat, but the other two are fucking brilliant. The story's brilliant. 
Um, like, really gets you on the edge of your seat, doesn't it? You know. Yeah. Well, they're all they all swept at the Oscars, so. Million percent, man. Um, if people don't like really long films and you don't want to sit there for nine hours watching something amazing, uh, the whole trilogy, I suppose, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right, then number two, Benno. I'd say. Uh, I'd say it's, it's, I think it's um. N- number two is a toss-up, but I think I'd have to go with uh, the Breakfast Club. Cause I, haven't had, I don't know anything about that. Obviously, I know uh, what it is, but uh, it's it's the other John. It's another one of the John Hughes films, as well as Ferris Bueller. It's big. Oh, but cool! It's not, it's not so much com. It's 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 not as much comedy as it is kind of a, a coming of age drama, and it's like the coming of age movie basically because of a. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. the blueprint for things like um. Oh, what's that film with Matt Damon and Robin Williams? I loved it. Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. That's I love that film, too, man. I, I really love that film. Not your fault. Yeah. yeah, I might try and watch The Breakfast Club one day. It does look a bit of its day as well, because I think, oh no, I think I've seen some scenes when it's like some... It is, but it's like... The kids yeah, I think complaining and having to go at each other. I think it kind of lends itself to that, so it's not too big a problem. And I can yeah. quote like a word from it. It's, I've, I've, I think I've seen it way too many times at this point. But, uh, Fair enough. Number one then, Ben. Number one, honestly, and I know it's not it's not the best of that trilogy, but for me it's Return of the Jedi because good stuff. I think, I think it's I don't think it's as good as Empire in some bits, but then when it's at its uh, climax, it's at the conclusion. I think it's probably peak Star Wars in my opinion. Like I don't think anything else has really topped that for me yet. So. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's really like black and white, good guy and bad guy, it still is done really, really, really well. Like the final, it, and it's amazing how you can just have three dudes inside a room, and so much is on the line, and you're so tense on the edge of your seat, man. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. You know, and how Darth Vader sees the light and throws um the Emperor off the ledge of the um, Death Star. Brilliant. And obviously yeah. you have Lando and the alien driving through the um Death Star. Yeah. So yeah, very good choices, man. Uh, top five genres then. Um, alright then this is the final bit we'll do for film we could talk about how shit prequel how shit is making prequels but you know that's that's obvious you can't really you know what's going to happen and it's very hard to write them and there, is there any good prequels really no so there might be a couple of decent ones like The Hobbit's okay but you know Um. yeah anyway actually forget top five genres would you guys still want to do it because because we don't, you know, we've talked about films loads, actually. I just thought, you know... Uh, you could say, we could all say, like, our number one genre. Like, what we're a bit biased to. I've got an idea after, but, um, but yeah, just... Maybe do it at the end. All right, then. Next sure. thing is Desert Island Discs. All right, then, Ben. We'll do you first. Um, yeah. Oh, no, we, we can't call it Desert Island Discs. Um, stranded, wow. stranded Beach... Uh, CDs. Alright then. Wow. Stranded, stranded beats. That's Sounds like some Asian. Not being racist. A Bollywood, a B movie. A Bollywood. <laughs> no. Witty banter. Bollywood. Joking, joking. Don't get offended. <laughs> Alright then. So, but we're going to spice it up a little bit. There'll be some different sort of questions. Alright then. So, what CD would you oh, take okay. with you, Ben? CD. Uh. Probably The Who's Greatest Hits. I love The Who. Good uh, shit, bro. I could, I could listen to them uh, for the rest of my life, so I might as well. Good you know. shit. Um, DV- a movie? Yeah, yeah. What, DVD, Blu-ray movie? Uh, would box sets be uh, included in that? Or? Um, no, box, box sets will be next. Box sets the next question. Ah, just, okay, film, okay. just one film and then the box set. To be fair, I think... Even though it's not my top one, I think I'd probably take uh, I'd probably take like Return of the King or something. Yeah, yeah, because that's like three hours. I feel like there's a there's a yeah there's a lot more to it. You kind of sink your teeth into it and just yeah. To be fair, there's Quo Vadis that film that's like six hours. You could sink your teeth into that, but you probably get bored. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually true. watched Quo Vadis, but it's just um. The extended member... edition. Huh? Oh, sorry, the extended edition of Return of the King as well, so you get even more. But how long is it? Like four uh, or something like that. For Return of the King, it's like, or no, for, for uh, the Hobbit, it was only like ten minutes. But for Lord of the Rings, it's about like half an hour each. But it takes shit from the books and it makes it like even better, honestly. Okay. 
Um, oh no, I wasn't yeah. thinking of Quo Vardis. I was thinking of bloody um, Ben Hur. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That film, the original one. That film's very, very long. I've um, heard it's. I've heard it's good though. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's solid. You know, it's very solid. Uh, you could watch the best of youth. That'd be funny. Or Fanny and Alexander or Napoleon. That's five hours. Gandhi was quite long as well. Um, Nineteen hundred was quite long. Hamlet was quite long. Lord of the Rings very long. Once upon a time in America, man, very long. <laughs> You can get some classics in that, but yeah. Um, box set then next. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, when you say box set, do you mean like... TV, TV show. Ah, yeah, TV. Um, I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, I Seinfeld. Say Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'll oh, say Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. So that didn't end so well, so... Um, probably no, not that. Just drop the series. I was quite like Future, uh, future in that. Yeah. <laughs> I think probably Futurama, I mean, that's always been uh, one of the funniest Love shows. Love that. Been. Brilliant choice. So next is... Um, so box set to CD. Um, I think it's a dinner, a certain dinner that you have to eat every day. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, um, yeah, I suppose a different vein of, uh, of it. But, um, I don't know, actually. That's, huh. You know, I'll be a basic bitch and say pizza... Fair Maybe enough. Domino. Maybe not. Just... Getting Domino's on the island. Uh, a drink and luxury item. A drink and luxury item. Uh, yeah. Probably mixed fruit cider and fucking, I don't know, the Kindle or something. Good shit, man. Aaron, you next then. CD. Um, probably Is This It by The Strokes. Yeah. No, Who that's... the bloody hell are the strokes? I'm... You triggering me here, James. You triggering me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a good one. The like strokes. That. Rock band. I told you this last night <laughs> because I knew you were going to have a go at me for it. But... No, I didn't even watch it. You only live once. Isn't that bloody what Seth Rogen did? No. Oh. <laughs> under the covers of under cover of Dark. What? That's not hard <laughs> to explain. Some day. Oh, I don't even know what to think. <laughs> I'm going to do the same for yours then, James. If you want. No, I'm joking. No, not that. Huh? No, no, nothing, nothing. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, 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 I like I think it's a good choice. I don't know much about them, but I just thought, who the bloody hell are these geezers? I didn't pay attention because I thought, I don't know who you're talking about when you sent me that screenshot yesterday. Oh, right. right, then what DVD then, film, Blu-ray? Um, Film, I'd probably take... Don't um... take Submarine. Oh, no, no, no. I just need to clear that up. Last week, I said the first thing that came to my head because I was under pressure. <laughs> it's not in my top five. Because I dropped it. I dropped yeah. it on the last second. On the last second. I would probably take with me something like. Um, it's either Endgame just for a laugh. Fair enough. Amazing maybe, film. Maybe American Psycho because it just makes you, you know, feel a bit weird. It just yeah. 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 You go into madness on the island. <laughs> yeah. Uh, box set then. Um, I was I was gonna say Futurama, but just for change sake, I'll say. Um, the Simpsons. I might take. It sounds a bit random, but maybe like some Alan Partridge stuff with me. Just for that. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm, I'm gonna be on the Glenn! 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 <laughs> No, yeah. no, no, but uh, that, that last episode, man, of Alan Partridge, when he was from comparing, well, didn't a woman have heroin addiction? And he was trying to say, my terrible heroin addiction was awful. That sounds like, that sounds like someone we know. And then he started, <laughs> and he started calling, was he, he started calling needles or something at the end. <sighs> like, my terrible heroin addiction was way, I was just, I was just oh, that one was so that. funny. And, and the, um, Dan, Dan. Dan! 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 Dan. <laughs> we are on the Autobahn! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just shit like that makes me laugh, man. The legendary, legendary box set. At least when you'll be on the island, you'll get a good laugh. Well, the same with future armor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Alright then, next one. Um, oh, bloody hell, what was it? Oh, yeah, uh, a certain dinner that you have to eat. Now, Aaron, I know, as you know, you have to eat four big meals a day, um, so. I'd, I'd probably just take pasta with me. I like pasta. So just loads of pasta, fair enough. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a yeah fair enough, man. Um, 
What's the final? Oh yeah, drink and luxury item. Um, drink. I'd probably take probably just a massive vat of like Stella with me. Good shit. Just the biggest one I can carry with me. You would die though because you get dehydrated. I'm on an island. The cargo is going to follow it. I don't care if, what happens if I'm on that island. I'd rather, I'd rather go out with Stella. Good shit. Um, Fair enough. And the luxury item? Um, probably. Um, Snapchat. I need. No. Probably my MacBook, just because you know I can do stuff on it. You can have a laugh on there. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. You should have brought Snapchat with you, Aaron, to have a laugh on that and do silly stories and upload them. You could, you could ask for help. I'm about to die. Hashtag help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm about to die. Oh, well. Mustn't grumble. <laughs> Someone messages me. My life is still hard, Aaron. Your turn now, isn't it, James? Unless I've got that in the wrong order. Connected. Oh shit! Disconnected, yeah. lads. Yeah, he's still on. He's still on. <sighs> Bloody hell! <gasps> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. I'll just skim through this fairly quick then, um, and give a bit of detail. What's the first question? CD. Oasis. The time flies. Brilliant. Nice. Yeah, that's a good. Choice. Yeah. I was going to pick Eminem. But the only problem with that is that his songs are pretty aggressive, and as much as I love Eminem, you'd struggle to listen to him forever because the songs sort of link in. Even though I love, he's my goat. He's the greatest yeah. of all time. 1996 to 2005, some of the probably the best music ever. But yeah. Eminem, he hasn't got a lot. He's he's got Curtain Call the hits, and that I get really old. And the rest of his albums are basically nowhere near as good. I mean, the Eminem show is quite decent, and you know. And obviously some other albums are alright, but yeah. Um, what's it called? Yeah, so that's the CD, Oasis, Time Flies. Um, what's the other one? DVDs, film. Um, I'm stuck between Pulp Fiction and Goodfellas, as you know, I love that. those films. They're, they're the decent amount of length, and they're mm. quite fun, fun films. Uh, I'd have to go for Goodfellas. Just, actually, no, that's a bit, uh, I don't know. Pulp Fiction's longer, so you can get more out of it, and there's more stories in there, but... And that that probably just by... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck it. Even though I like Pulp Fiction slightly better, just bring Goodfellas for the laugh, because I've already seen Pulp Fiction a million times. Goodfellas I've only seen, like, 15 times probably by now, so, you know. Still a lot. Mm. Um, what's the next one? What's the next one? Box set, ga- no, Sopranos. So many episodes. Yeah. Gang- gangster shit. Gotta get that gangster shit, that gangster vibe. Um, dinner, roast, roast gravy dinner, brilliant roast dinner, Sunday dinner, bringing that. Uh, drink water and uh, luxury item. Probably, uh, probably some lifting, lifting equipment or something. I don't know. That's yeah. probably it, really. Or punching bag. I don't know. Yeah, that's a decent choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's the end of Desert Island Disc. I mean, I mean, what did I call it? Stranded Beach CDs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, next one, Room One Nine One. So we're gonna put some shit. We're all gonna present some things. I feel like me and Aaron have probably got the same one. We're gonna present some things, and you're gonna, you, the other two are gonna decide whether it goes in Room One Hundred One. I'm gonna put some shit out oh, there yeah. first. So my first one, I'll do two. The first one, maybe three. The first one is um. People who have like a god complex, who have too much personal pride, never can admit they're wrong. And in every situation, they're the king of absolutely everything. They're overly competitive about little things, probably like chess or or um or bloody top trumps or whatever. I don't know or Uno or Monopoly. They're overly competitive. They want to win everything. They want to be in charge of everything. They think they're the best. They think they know best. They never listen to anyone else. Those just too much personal pride mainly. Would you put that in room one nine one? Uh. Hmm. I think we've got to hear the other ones first because I think that's how it works, isn't it? Oh, no, no, you just decide, just decide. Oh, wait, do you only get to put one in room 191? Yeah, yeah you, you... Oh, we, bollocks. We'll present one idea and then we say like, oh. his best idea and we put it in at the end. I was going to do another one, like about people who just upload every single part of their life to social media, whether it's happy or sad. It just seems like they're really oh. after attention. 
And the thing is, they should just talk to someone if they feel this way. If they, if they feel like their life is so mundane that they have to upload every single thing to social media, get therapy. If you feel like you have to put all your problems up on social media, get some therapy, you know, please help yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Is this aimed at anyone in particular? Um, no. No, no. <laughs> Uh, anyone, I, I don't have Snapchat or I, all I have is Facebook and there's a couple of people who upload stuff to Facebook so I don't know, if anyone uploads any other stuff to any social media, get some help, you know, because to be honest what are you trying to gain out of just uploading stuff saying that you feel down you know, what are you trying to gain, what can people say because you need professional help, you know, whoever's doing this, anyone who's doing this so yeah, those are my two so personal pride complex and uploading everything to social media, those are my first two, your guys you guys next. Uh, do you want me to go first, Ben? Or yeah, 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 Ben. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Aaron, Aaron. Um, I'm a follow you. So, I've only really... James has sort of taken two of mine, but I can think of another one. My main one is uh, catfishing. <laughs> I really, really dislike it. <laughs> no, sorry. This is going to get me weird, but if I'm going to just explain it, the amount of times people that I know in real life, and I know... Like who live, who are online or that, who have got catfished and uh, have been attempted to get catfished <coughs> for, for like money, for just you know being able to talk to people, whatever. It's just it's not genuine at all, and there's no real benefit in the end to anyone, in my opinion. Mm. It just it really gets on my nerves. So that's one of my things. <laughs> yeah, catfishing is a big issue because obviously that might be. I'm not going to spoil anything, but that might be the one I put in room 191 because it's such a big issue and paedophiles can do it or then catfish you and rob you, catfish you and kill you. So that would be the best thing probably to get rid of totally. Yeah. And all these people with personal pride complexes will put things on social media. Oh, yeah, by the way, personal pride isn't bad as long as it's warranted. If you've done something to warrant it and you're a little bit, you know, a tiny bit proud of it and you want to, you know, as blah, blah, whatever. Humble, I think it's what the best Yeah, thing as long as you're a bit humble and you can admit that you've got some flaws, but if you've done something amazing, you can be a bit proud of it. But don't be shoving it down everyone's throats. If you see the truly greatest people in sports, um, Usain Bolt uh, in running, um, Roy Jones Jr. for boxing, uh, John Jones for MMA, you know, um, Cristiano Ronaldo for football, maybe Pele, I don't know, You've whatever. All these geezers, all the people say that they're the best for them. You know, they don't say themselves or other people say it for them. You get me? Yeah. yeah. So if other people are saying it about you, then you know that's what matters really. But yeah, what were you guys? So that'd be a good one. Ben, what's yours for Room 191? See, I think I think you kind of... I think with the social media one, that was probably what I was going to say. But uh, I don't know. Besides, I think... Um, I think it's mm-hmm. something we were talking about earlier that really gets me. It's like... Uh, it's clickbait culture. Like it seems to be not just on YouTube, but it seems to be everywhere nowadays. Hundred um, percent. Well, because I think you, I think because anyone can make content, there's there's become a culture of having to grab anyone's attention that you can, and using dishonest methods. You know, and and often, uh, like just literally just this morning, I saw what was supposed to be a trailer for Spider-Man: Far From Home, and. This guy called Emergency Awesome, who I, I, I can't stand because he uses so much of it. He made a thumbnail where it's Spider-Man and Venom next to each other. Because he's, he's thinking, oh, people click on this because I think Venom will be in the movie. But, you know. Yeah, Emergency Awesome. I feel like he's done some good Game of Thrones videos, but everything else yeah. is just sort of clickbaity and rubbish. I, that's probably what's going where he is, I think, is, is that kind of thing. But... Yeah. I don't know why he has to put Spider-Man next to Venom. It's so irritating. Yeah, it's just the thing is though it's only got 164k views, nothing special. It's most few videos. I'm gonna look them up now. I swear it's Game of Thrones. Oh, Deadpool bloopers. Never mind. Yep, Game of Thrones season eight episode three review. Yeah, yeah mostly Game of Thrones. Avatar: Last Airbender, new Netflix teaser, whatever. I don't know. And then yeah. some end game stuff. Actually, yeah, thinking about it. Putting social media in room 191 isn't too much of a bad idea, you know, because they won't be catfished in the first place. But it's not all about social media. It's people who put everything on social media. Social media is the right way to keep in contact with people. So I'd say the catfishing one personally. Aaron, what would you say? Um, I'd probably have to go with... Hmm. 
I'm gonna have to go with your personal pride thing if I'm being. I mean, I know catfishing does annoy me a lot, but. <laughs> but people pride... can get raped or killed or things stolen from them. But I think if if you have common sense, you can see through a lot of it. It's just the idea. Yeah, but even some people with a bit of intelligence are like, let's meet up with this person. They're definitely not a catfish. Massive arse. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm torn between the two, to be honest. I can't. Ben, what would you pick? Uh, I'd say probably catfishing. I think that bit one's more relevant. So, to me, yeah, but... both pick catfishing. Good shit. That's going in room 191. Yeah. We need a big lever. Maybe we could... Huh? We need a big lever, like another show that we might have stolen this idea from uses. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should do another one, room 191 for a laugh with another guest. I don't know. Just for a laugh. Yeah. Things they want to put in room 191 and then we... No, it would be sick to do it with George. That would be amazing to see what he says. <sighs> that would yeah. be so sick. Uh, probably best to leave the top five genre thing, you know, because we yeah. talked about films enough, to be fair. Yeah. That's it then for today. This podcast flew by, man. I enjoyed it. It was a good laugh. Oh, no. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Thank Thanks. you for doing it. No worries. Ben will probably be on fun. another one, you know, Star Wars one or something. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, cheers. Thanks for watching. Lighters. Thanks for watching. Cheers.